If you're thinking about using Bubble to build your no-code app, but you've looked around at some different apps built on the platform and they don't really look that good in terms of appearance, you might be struggling to make a confident decision that you feel good about on whether or not to use Bubble for your app. And that kind of sucks because Bubble has a ton of power in terms of functionality and the types of apps and use cases that it can support. But on the other hand, if none of the apps built on Bubble look good, then there's no point in really using it, is there? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk through five specific things you need to consider to ultimately decide whether or not Bubble is right for you. Now, there's one thing in particular that most people aren't thinking about when it comes to design. In fact, I'd say 95% of people don't ever stop to think about this. And if you wanna know what that is, we're gonna talk about it at the end, so make sure you stick around for that. But but first, if you're new, I'm Kristen over at Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can launch their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. And if that's what you're doing, then go ahead and subscribe below so you don't miss out on any videos to help you. All right, so let's jump right in. You're thinking about using Bubble to build your no-code app, or maybe you've already started building your app, but you're not seeing a lot of apps that really wow you in terms of design, and so you're not sure whether it's worth it to move forward. Well, the first thing to understand is that your app's design, in terms of aesthetic design, should correlate with the different rollout stages that your app will go through during your launch. This is really important to understand. When you launch a first version app, you should be launching to a very particular segment of your total addressable market or your TAM. Now your very first segment that you launch to should be made up of very early adopters. Now early adopters are different than an early majority or a late majority, for example. And those are different segments that you're also going to roll your app out to over time. Early adopters are really important to pinpoint because those are the types of users who like to get their hands on early access products. In other words, they get really excited about trying out new technical solutions. They understand those tech solutions are gonna come with some different bugs or hiccups or maybe some rough designs, but that's okay because for them, part of the fun is getting to experience that and even provide their feedback on how to improve that. They don't just like using the solution, they like being a part of the rollout process of that solution. Now, if you go through the process of designing a really aesthetically perfect app before you roll out to those early adopters, honestly, you're gonna be wasting a lot of time when you really should be thinking about the solution in terms of practical use. Yes, design is important in terms of usability design. You want those early adopters to be able to effectively use the app so that they can have the experience and give you the feedback, but you don't need to be making it to look pretty perfect and polished for them. You're just doing too much work up front that's not necessary when you can be focusing that work on the things that are important and are gonna give you the feedback you need to then justifiably move forward into those next design stages. Look, the reality is you're probably not coming into this with millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, even tens of thousands of dollars. So why waste a single penny on something that is not important right from the very start? Again, you do need to make sure your app is usable from a design standpoint. It does not to need to look polished or perfect if you are targeting the right early adopters, which you should be doing. So look, don't focus on step 10 if you haven't even gotten to step two or three. Get to those first steps and then you can work your way out. Now, you might be saying, well, Kristen, that's all good and well, but what about when I get to that step 10 and I do want my app to look polished and perfect? Well, here's the thing to understand. Just like the majority of people using Bubble are not programmers or traditional developers, they also aren't designers. So just like you can build a really poorly performing app on Bubble, and 
a lot of people do because again they they just don't know the appropriate development best practices or methodologies to follow a lot of people are going to design apps that just don't look that good because they don't know design best practices to follow right it's pretty simple so just like if you want your app to perform well you need to make sure you're building it correctly if you want it to look good you need to make sure you're designing it correctly and just like you can't build an app with no prior knowledge you can't design an app with no prior knowledge so i i think it's kind of just assumed that bubble is the problem when apps don't look very pretty but the reality is the the designer is really the problem and i don't say that in a negative way because again if you're not a designer then you shouldn't be able to design an app, right? How could you? But if you want your app to look like it has been professionally designed, you are going to have to either become a knowledgeable and skilled designer, or you are going to have to hire someone to help you with the design. Now, don't let that deter you because going back to the first point, you do not need a perfectly professionally designed app right out of the gates go through the initial launch phases, get the validation you need, find the justification to then invest the time or invest the money into the aesthetic design. That's how you need to be approaching this. So again, just like you can build a poorly performing app on Bubble, and on the flip side, you can build a really well performing app on Bubble, you can build a poorly designed app on Bubble, and you can also design apps in really pretty and polished ways on Bubble. Now, another point I want to quickly touch on is if you're the type of person who is just digging endlessly for examples of apps built on Bubble because you want to find you know, real examples of just every little thing you're thinking of before you can be confident. Well, understand that when apps have been built on any platform, and really this is true of any business in general, once they are actually in use, in live situations with users on board, and in other words, the person who built it is now running a business, 99% of the time, they're not talking about their app and how it was built. They are instead running their business. So you're going to have a lot of people out there who have bubble apps that they're using. And at this point, they're not thinking of them as bubble apps. They're just thinking of them as apps and they're using them in their lives, in their businesses to help run other businesses, to help run their own businesses, whatever it is. And they're just no longer really talking about you know, the design aspects of Bubble or, or any of the aspects of Bubble. They're just running their business. So if you're looking for, you know, endless use cases and examples to help make yourself feel more confident, know that there are plenty of people out there using Bubble apps every single day, and they're just not shouting it from the rooftops from the perspective of bubble itself. So the most important thing that you can do is, yeah, you know, look at those examples. I mean, we share plenty of examples to help you understand what's possible with a platform like bubble. But once you've done your due diligence and you know that the platform is going to serve your needs, but you know that you also have to put in the work when it comes to things like design, for example, once you can understand those things, then move forward. You're going to be so much better served by actually getting your product out there and starting to get feedback from users and, and growing a real business than sitting where you are and worrying about all those what ifs. Again, do your due diligence. Don't go into it blindly, but there's a point at which you really just need to move forward. All right, the fourth thing that I want you to keep in mind is sometimes not very fun to hear, but as an entrepreneur, it's something that needs to be kind of just a part of your reality. But the single app idea you have in mind right now, or maybe that you've started to build, it might not be successful. You might not get the validation you're looking for. You may never bring enough users on board to become profitable and to continue moving forward with the app and the business. And while again, that's not fun to think about, 
you need to consider it because when you do, it's going to help you focus on the things that are important right now versus getting caught up in the things that don't matter yet. Now this goes back to what we talked about previously, but your design from an aesthetic standpoint is going to be important. But the, the biggest priority right now is usability design for those early adopters. So if you are focusing on creating a really professionally designed, perfected app in terms of appearances right now, and you haven't even validated the product, meaning you haven't brought users on board who are actively using it and who are ideally paying to use it. If you haven't done that yet, then focus on that because you can do that without a professionally designed app. I promise you can. And if you can't, it means you need to look at the idea or your execution of the rollout or the marketing or the messaging or something like that. You need to look at that versus the aesthetic design because a really pretty design is not going to mask a poorly executed idea. Okay, so I want you to focus on the priorities and it's gonna help to do that by reminding yourself that this single app idea may not be your big success. But if you can go through the idea of developing a product, learning how to use no code tools, rolling out a product, bringing those early adopters on board, getting their feedback, putting them through a testing process, if you can experience all of that and build the skills that will come along with that, then you can take those skills and apply them to any other idea you ever come up with. So this single idea, it matters, but in the grand scheme of things, everything that will come along with you executing on that idea is going to be more important. Okay, so remind yourself of that and then go back to focusing on the usability design versus the aesthetic design in this moment. Now, at the very beginning of this video, I mentioned there was something related to design that probably 95% of people aren't thinking about. And here's what it is. Now, I had mentioned that when you initially roll out your app, you're gonna be following a certain process. You're going to initially launch your pilot app to those early adopters. You're gonna take their feedback, make sure that you validated the solution, make any iterations, and then you'll continue rolling it out to more segments of your market. Now, that can sound really good in theory, and all of this can make sense in theory. But once you actually go to do it, you can find it really challenging because even though you know that you should be focusing on the usability design versus that aesthetic design, when you actually bring those users on board, it can feel a little bit, I don't know, just you don't feel confident because you, you know that your product is not finished, really. And, and here's the thing you need to understand. You should be communicating this with those early adopters, okay? I'm gonna say that again. When you bring on those early adopters to your first version app, and you know you don't have a fully fleshed out product, you know it's not professionally designed, you should communicate this with them, okay? This is the big thing that can unlock endless momentum for you. Your early adopters should know that they are early adopters. And you should actually be helping them understand that they are going to be a part of an exciting process that's going to give them early access to a new solution. It'll give them the opportunity to provide their feedback and actually influence how that solution evolves. They should know this because that's part of what gets them excited. Not only that, it's gonna get you vastly better feedback because they're going to want to be a part of that process. And if they know they're a part of that process, they're gonna be even more eager to take part in it. Okay, this only happens if you target the right users for that first launch. But once you do, communicate with them. Again, this alone is going to unlock so much momentum and growth for you. Set the expectations and do it in a way that gets them excited. 
bring them into the process, right? Get them engaged. And you're going to have so much fun rolling out your app because at that point, you're going to get your app into the hands of people who are excited for the idea that you have built out and brought to life. Now I have a bonus for you here. If you've decided that you want to use Bubble to move forward with your app, I want you to head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop to take part in an extended training that is going to help you go through the process of scoping the most valuable first version of your app so you can give those early adopters a product they actually want and need. It's going to talk you through how to start using no code tools correctly with the correct development methodology and strategies, best practices. It's going to show you what's possible to achieve using no code tools as a non-technical entrepreneur. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. It's a free training you can take part in and we'll hope to see you there. All right. If you found this video helpful, give it a like down below and we can't wait to see you in the next one.